Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we are doing a speedy speed ramp tutorial. Now, a speed ramp in its most basic form is just speeding something up and then slowing it back down again in post-production. And they can be used for a variety of different reasons, mainly to make something seem like it's faster than it is, and also stylistically and rhythmically with music, so you can go in and out of slow motion. And it's just kind of a cool effect. You've seen it probably in a lot of music videos and other places, which is probably why you're watching this tutorial, because you want to know how to do it. So I'm going to show you the editing portion of it today, but if you're going to go out and shoot your own clip that you want to use a speed ramp on, there are a couple things that you need to keep in mind when you're shooting something like this. Number one, you have to shoot in a high frame rate if you want to go back down to slow motion. If you shoot something at a normal frame rate, say 24 FPS, then you speed it up and then you slow it back down again. The slowing back down, you can only really get back to 24 FPS, but if you're shooting in 60 FPS or 120 FPS, it's going to allow you to get that nice buttery smooth slow motion when you bring the speed ramp back down. So if you are going to go shoot something like this, make sure you are shooting in a high frame rate. And the second tip for you is going to be your shutter speed when you're shooting slow motion, okay? The higher your shutter speed, the less motion blur you'll have in your shot. And the lower your shutter speed, the more motion blur you'll have in your shot. So definitely keep that in mind if you're planning on doing any visual effects or any rotoscoping. You're going to want less motion blur because then it's going to make it easier for you to cut your subject out. So if you're planning on shooting something that you want to do a speed ramp on later, definitely plan ahead. High frame rate, high shutter speed if you don't want as much motion blur. If you're here just because you want to learn how to edit, we are going to dive into Adobe Premiere and I'm going to show you how to do it super, super quick. Open up Adobe Premiere because we are getting started right now. All right, Premiere is open and on my timeline, I've got this nice buttery smooth slow motion shot of a Rolls Royce ghost in a private airplane hangar flanked by private jets. This is almost certainly the most bougie tutorial I've ever done. And this clip is coming from a project I am editing for Rolls Royce, which I was editing on a live stream, I think this past weekend. So if you missed the live stream, link in the video description below for you to check it out. That's not this video. This video is a speed ramp tutorial, but in that live stream, I go through a bunch of best practices and a whole bunch of little goodies for you editors out there. So definitely check it out after this video. But right now, let's jump back into the speed ramp. So. The first thing I'm going to do is expand my video track so I can actually see what we're going to ramp. And there are two ways to do this. Way number one is grab uh, the little line in between video one and video two. And you can just pull it up like that so you can make it bigger. Or the way that I prefer and the way that I like is holding down shift and using the mouse scroll wheel because you can expand and collapse all the video tracks kind of uniformly and all at the same time. Uh, that way's a little bit faster and it's a little bit cooler. So I prefer that way. And uh, as you notice, my clip already has come in slow motion into Premiere. And those of you that are shooting your own clips, maybe it comes in as 60 FPS or 120 FPS fluid. So what you'll need to do is click on your clip, control R to bring up your speed duration, and you'll have to lower the speed to get it to be slow motion. So a rule of thumb that I always like to use is 60 FPS, you can lower it to 50% speed, and then 120 FPS, you can lower it to 20% speed. So always remember that, that's the way that I've been doing it, and that's the way that I think works the best. But because this already came in in slow motion, we don't have to worry about it. So with my track, expanded and my clip already in slow motion, I'm going to come right up here to this little effects button in the top left hand corner, right click on that guy, go to time remapping and speed. And now what I'm going to do is just kind of scrub in my clip and figure out where I want my speed ramp to start right there feels about good. I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to bring up my pen tool, make a keyframe for speed, hit V on the keyboard to go back to my arrow, hold down shift, and then I'm going to drag up on this line to the right of my little marker right here. And that's going to increase the speed. So I'm going to go as high as I can, which is 1000 150%, which is fine for now. Go a little bit farther over, somewhere where you want your speed ramp to end. Right here looks about nice. P for the pen tool, click your keyframe, V for the arrow, and then we're just gonna hold down shift and drag this back down to 100%. And you can see it's at 205 right now, 200. And we're just gonna drag this down to 100%, theoretically creating a nice little speed shelf. And then what we're gonna do is take our leftmost point, click on it and just drag out to the right to create a ramp. And the same thing over here, drag to the right to create a ramp. And now we have created a nice little speed ramp for ourselves. And if you click on any one of these points and start to drag it, you'll see in this preview window over here, where the clip is actually starting from. So this is a nice little place for you to understand where things are starting and stopping. So right there looks good. And I want this to ramp to about there. And I want the ramp to start right as the second plane is coming into view. You can see on the left-hand side there, right as the plane is coming into the left-hand side. And we are going to end it right about there. Looking good. And now for the ramp portion, you can click on either one of these points. Let's zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. Grab this little bezier handle and just kind of turn it to create a nice S curve on your speed ramp. 
And that's looking pretty good. And if we wanna increase the time in between the ramps, all we have to do is grab the line in the middle, hold down shift, and we can actually increase this to something a little bit higher, maybe 2000%. And now that ramp is gonna be a little bit faster. And you can always just kind of adjust these by grabbing individual points and kind of sliding them inwards towards each other. You can make it more of a uniform kind of bump here on your speed, but you're gonna wanna play with this and you're gonna wanna get it exactly right. But just know that when you click and hold and drag on any one of these little points, you can see up there in the uh, sequence window where it's kind of starting and stopping. So use that as a nice visual reference of where your speed ramps are starting and stopping. And ultimately you will get to a place that looks really nice. So this is looking really good. I could always grab all four of these by clicking on one, holding down shift, and then clicking across and moving the entire ramp kind of earlier on in the clip. Maybe that's something that you wanna do. Maybe you wanna extend it a little bit, but this is looking pretty good to me. And guys, that is how you get a nice smooth speed ramp. Now for me, I'm gonna add a little bit of gusto to this by adding an adjustment layer onto my timeline, coming over to my effects, and adding a distort transform onto that adjustment layer. And I'm going to start at the beginning of my clip on that transform property, scaling it up to 110%. And I'm also going to rotate it three degrees in the direction that the camera's facing. I'm going to set two keyframes there. And then after my speed ramp, somewhere down here, click the rotation back to zero and the scale back to 100. So I am theoretically scaling out and rotating even more with the camera throughout the duration of the shot, just to give it a little bit more pizzazz and a little bit more smoothness when it's gonna be in my edit. And that's it guys, that's the speed ramp tutorial. That's all you really need to know. Making sure that you right click on this effects button and go to speed duration. Then you're gonna do all of your ramping on your timeline, making sure to expand your video layer as big as you can, because that's just gonna make your ramping just a little bit easier. Each shot is gonna be different. Each time you do a speed ramp, it's gonna feel a little bit different. So definitely play around with your footage and what you have to make it as smooth as you possibly can. And then if you guys want, you can add some embellishments with a transform property on an adjustment layer to kind of just help the movement a little bit more and help the speed a little bit more. That kind of stuff always helps. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Nice, short, simple, sweet, to the point. That's how we like to do it here on Learn How to Edit Stuff. Just to recap, if you're gonna shoot your own, 60 FPS, 120 FPS, high frame rate equals buttery smooth slow motion for your speed ramps, more of a stylistic choice. Also your shutter speed, the higher your shutter speed, the less motion blur there will be. So if you're gonna do any VFX or any comping or anything like that, just keep that in mind when you're doing your shots. And on the edit side, you're gonna make your video layer as big as you possibly can, because that's gonna allow you to see that ramp a little bit more. And definitely dial it in and play with all the settings a little bit and also Bezier curve those ramps so it's a nice S curve in and out of your slow motion. And that's it. Go off and make your own awesome speed ramps in the video description below. You will find several links, some to help you, some to help me, and also the live stream that I mentioned earlier. It is worth the watch. I put a lot of time into that. I put a lot of nuggets of gold into that. So definitely go and check it out if you haven't already. My name is Nadine Sands. This of course is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Please consider subscribing if you have not already. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.